The year is 1993. And as the business professional you are, you'd be looking for a business professional luxury sedan. Something that would complement your coiffed hair, your argyle cardigan, your pleated khakis. Something comfortable to hustle to the office in, pick up the dry cleaning in, and ferry those kids to that new Jurassic Park movie. And since you aren't boring, you'd want something with some gusto, some passing power, some cornering ability, something to keep your head up about at tennis lessons. And in 1993, you would have been right to choose the BMW 7 Series. And in 2019, it's the perfect car for me. This is my 1993 BMW 740i. It's the second generation of the 7 Series. It makes it an E32, which they produced from 1986 to 1994 with the 740 being introduced in 92 uh, with the advent of the M60 engine, which is what's under the hood of this. It's an all-aluminum V8, makes 282 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque at the crank from the factory. And we've already dynoed all these cars to see how they do compared to when they were new, uh, but we'll talk about that at a later date. So the M60 is a great engine. Uh, it sounds great and it's pretty durable uh, with only really one major flaw, and that was the alloy that they chose to use to line the cylinder walls. Like we said, it's an aluminum block, uh, so they had to harden the cylinder walls to stand up to combustion. BMW chose something called Nicosil, uh, nickel, aluminum, silicone uh, alloy, and that worked great in Germany. Uh, but once they started shipping cars to places like the US, where we kind of have a little bit crappy fuel, uh, the sulfur content in our fuel started reacting with that coating and deteriorating it to the point that these engines just would lose compression completely and become boat anchors. Uh, so BMW extended the warranty, replaced a lot of engines for a lot of people, and uh, basically the problem's gone at this point. So honestly, I don't know if this engine was affected and replaced or just never affected. Uh, we could check the stamping on the block, which we'll do at some point, but the fact is it has 213,000 miles on it and it runs fine. It's very healthy, so I'm not that worried about it. So this M60 is mated to a five-speed automatic ZF transmission, the 5HP30, uh, and thus far that's been pretty much my primary pain point on the car. The previous owner told me that it had a transmission leak. Uh, pretty much, he said anytime you drive on the highway for more than about 30 minutes, it would start leaking onto the exhaust and then start smoking like crazy. So I said, okay, yeah, no big deal. Hopped in it and tried to drive home to Ohio, uh, which is like an 11 or 12 hour drive. We made it about three hours before we stopped for food. Uh, I parked and it was just billowing smoke out both sides from the just quarts of ATF that had been dumped on, onto the cats. So we trailered it the rest of the way home, and long story short, I tried everything I could on that old transmission, but uh, the fact is it was an old ZF. They're not known for lasting all that long. So I just pitched it. I found a replacement on a car that was being parted out in Minnesota, and I had it shipped here for 560 bucks total, which isn't too bad, although it is still 10 more dollars than Mike paid for his entire Porsche. You don't pop. Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> 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 You may notice the hood opens the correct way, which is awesome. So anyway, I had to fix or replace the valve cover gaskets. Uh, when I got the car, they were leaking just a little bit, just kind of seeping and dripping right under the headers. So, you know, they would smell and make a little bit of smoke. Uh, and the car actually came with valve cover gaskets because the previous owner knew that it needed them. He just never installed them. I think they might've baked in the South Carolina sun too long because the thing leaks worse than ever now. And I'm losing like a lot of oil. So I gotta get back in there and fix that, probably get some new gaskets. Uh, but it's not a big deal, it's not that hard of a job, so whatever, I can live with it for now. I'm just leaving my mark everywhere I go. Uh, next, I'm gonna fix the heater core. Uh, that popped on me just on the way to work one day, started just filling the cabin with coolant, and that was pretty miserable. Uh, but the job wasn't that bad. Uh, you don't have to take the whole dash out, you just gotta take out the center console, kinda. So now let's talk about some stuff that I did that I didn't need to do. Uh, the first thing I actually did to this car was these headlights. I think they look fantastic. Some smileys with some crosshairs, what's up? So yeah, I think those look stupendous. And actually, and I think with those, I think I can say without a doubt that I have the best looking front end in this thing. Uh, I think Rocky could compete with the 300D, but not until he replaces those spray painted headlight surrounds. 
So this is my biggest triumph on the car, in my opinion, so far. Uh, this is what I wanted to do since the day I bought the car, was find the dingiest, most beat up, cheapest set of M parallels uh, that I could find in the country and just throw them on here and run them through the winter. About three months in, I had been having no luck and I was about ready to give up. I was starting to look at other wheels. I already had these Blizzax that I bought to kind of force myself into these wheels, but I couldn't find any for less than like 600 bucks, which just wasn't gonna work. So, uh, finally, like right before Thanksgiving, on the Facebook Marketplace, I found a post of BMW rims, and it was just a picture of the tire tread. And you could just see enough, enough wheel that you could tell they were in parallels if, if you knew what you were looking at. So, I started blowing this lady up. She was in Chicago. Uh, and I was like, I want them. I'll pay you right now. My sister also lives in Chicago. So, I was blowing my sister up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You got to go get me a set of wheels. So she got them, uh, I paid the lady, my sister brought them home uh, at Thanksgiving, and they are beat up, but I got them for 250 bucks, and I couldn't be happier. I think they look great, so especially from like 10 feet. But uh, yeah, so that, I'm super pumped on these wheels. I think they look awesome. So part of what makes these wheels look so good on the car is the fitment that I went with. Uh, we went with a 13 millimeter spacer up front and a 25 millimeter spacer at the back. Uh, still get a little bit of rubbing, on hard bumps, but I actually tried a 30 millimeter spacer in the rear and that was like offensively bad. So I had to knock it down to the 25 mil. Uh, so with that, it's, it's totally drivable. You do get a little rubbing every now and then, but it's not a big deal. So speaking of which, let's go drive it and see how it does. Oh, geez. This is why I can't have nice things, I guess. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to talk about what it's like to drive this car and what it's like to live with it every day. Uh, the first thing you might notice when you get into this car is that it's a pretty nice place to be. Uh, most everything's covered in leather and wood. Um, everything's soft and comfortable, and it's kind of like driving a couch down the street uh, in a good way. I like that. It's, it is pretty comfortable. Cabin space is good, uh, good enough. We can get four grown men in here without much of an issue. Uh, you might think it's like a huge car because it's a 7 Series, but by today's standards, it's really not that big. Um, the wheelbase on this car is actually an inch shorter than the new 3 Series, so it doesn't drive like a boat either. Um, it is still pretty heavy and pretty long and all that. It's not a small car, but it's not giant either. Uh, what else? Um, other stuff about the interior. There's, there's some stuff that I don't like in here. Uh, first, headspace or headroom. There is none. Absolutely none. It's really annoying. If I sit up straight, my head just rubs on the ceiling the whole time, and that's pretty annoying. So, kind of got to slouch down, whatever. Uh, next thing that I find a little bit annoying about the interior, not a whole lot of great storage. Uh, like, there's no, like, closable center console storage. Uh, the glove box is pretty cool, but, uh, you know, I like a lot of little storage spots, little nooks and crannies, and this doesn't really have much of that, so it doesn't really check that box for me. Uh, but it's really not that big of a deal. However, the next thing is a big deal to me. I'm pretty pissed about it. This car has no cup holders. None at all. And that sucks. I like to drink coffee on the way to work. When I'm on a road trip, I'll have like six different drinks. Um, so it really sucks to have no, cu or no cup holders. Uh, however, somebody tried to solve it. I don't know if this was something BMW did after the fact or, or what, but this came with the car and this is the cup holder solution. The idea is that you just wedge this in the center console down here, and then you get kind of two cup holders, but it is super floppy and not very trustworthy. Um, so really, I don't have any cup holders. So that sucks. But uh, other than that, as far as the interior goes, I'm happy, it's comfortable, it's nice. Uh, the stereo sounds good, so not so bad. So while the E32 didn't come with any cup holders, it did bring a lot of other stuff to the table. Uh, like this was the first car in the world to be offered with Xenon headlights. Uh, what else? You could, get, uh, you could get a car phone in this. You could get a fax machine in an E32. And you could even get a wine cooler. Although I don't know where you'd put your wine cups without any cup holders. Um, but obviously this car had none of those things. Uh, this is as lowly optioned to 740 as you could get, and I'm fine with that. In my opinion, that's for the better, because all those options are outdated and broken anyway, so uh, in my opinion, this vehicle has what counts, which is that there M60, as I hustle into a 25 zone. 
Uh, so yeah, it's got a great engine. The M60 feels awesome. It drives nicely. The power band's good. It's very smooth. Uh, miles per gallon, not too bad. Uh, we did math on miles per gallon, and I think this got 21.4, which isn't so bad. Uh, the transmission, now that it's replaced, is pretty good actually for you know an early 1990s transmission. Um, it shifts relatively quickly. It's not always hunting for gears. Um, it's pretty predictable, especially it's got a sport mode that's actually pretty good, predictable enough to have some fun with. Uh, it's got a snow mode, which starts you out in second gear. And are you gonna go? 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 For f sake. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the transmission is pretty good now that it works. Uh, and now that it works, it actually feels like the engine is in some way connected to the rear wheels. I can't really see much with all of this fogging. There we go, there's a stop sign here. Um, what else? The brakes? Nothing really to write home about. They work, they slow the car down in an appropriate amount of time. The pedal actually feels pretty nice. Uh, I replaced the brakes on this thing all the way around. Uh, it does have ABS, which was pretty early, and it works quite well. Uh, so the brakes are good. Uh, what else? Steering and suspension. Eh, certainly not the best part of the car. Uh, but to be fair, the whole front end needs a refresh. I need new control arm bushings, sway bar end links, steering rods, all sorts of stuff. If it can be replaced in the front end, it probably should be at this point in this car. So if I did all that, it would tighten it up a lot. It would feel a lot less wandery on the highway and vague in the corners. But once you're used to it, you can still have fun with it. Uh, you just kind of have to load up the, the steering a bit. But uh, you can still have fun, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, the suspension is actually pretty good uh, from you know when it had the stock suspension on it soft so soft and comfortable but I put these coilovers on it and they actually feel quite perfect in my opinion uh, they're still soft you know this is a big car I don't want it to be super stiff and sporty um, but it is leaps and bounds sportier than the stock stuff while still being really comfortable so I'm happy with the suspension hasn't blown out yet uh, we'll, we'll see how long it lasts all right, so I think that covers all the big stuff. Now let's talk about what it's been like to live with this car. Uh, first, let's address my outfit. Uh, this car currently has no heat. Even though I've already replaced the heater core, uh, this time around the blower motor took a big fat dump on me. So until the new one shows up, I don't have any heat. It's currently eight degrees Fahrenheit outside. Uh, so it's pretty cold to drive this thing. The footwell is like breezy. Uh, so my feet are just freezing off, but We'll get through it. Um, you know, the thing is, this car this car spent all its years in South Carolina, and everything just baked in the sun. All of these plastics in this car are so fragile and so brittle, uh, and when you put them in cold weather like this, it's been below zero for the last 48 hours. All those plastics that are already brittle just turn into this their own new kind of dust and just disintegrate. Uh, so I've been dealing with that left and right. So many little things in this car don't work. Uh, for example, windows up, down, no, oh, oh shit. Well, that one goes down, but it doesn't go back up. So now even colder, awesome. Uh, okay, so windows don't work very well. Uh, the doors don't latch half the time, most of the time, especially when it's cold. The doors don't lock, the locks don't work. So that's why I have a 1991 club. Um, what else? Uh, doors don't close, doors don't latch, windows don't work, doors don't lock. Uh, you know, it starts and it runs, and that's really the only thing I can count on. Everything else, subject to change, subject to break. Uh, so, you know, it's honestly, this thing has been like a bad kid. You still love it, you're still gonna get it through school, you're still gonna make sure it has a good life, but my God, does it frustrate you, and possibly freeze you to death. Um, so that's really how I feel about it. I still love this car. I enjoy driving it. I think it's cool. I think it looks awesome. But my God, what a pain in the ass. So with that said, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to, I got to go do something about this now. Uh, so next is going to be Kevin with the Audi Avant 200 or 200 Avant. Sorry. Uh, so enjoy that. It'll sing you some beautiful five cylinder songs. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Damn it.